True Lies, Season 1, Episode 7, Thoughts. This episode is called Independent Dependence. So, as usual, love this episode. Spoilers for these first seven episodes, as well as the movie. And we are going to dive right into my notes. So that is some very insecure security there at the opening. I quite like the cut between... I'm going to give you until the count of five. One, two, three, and then one, two, three, them practicing salsa dancing. And Helen helpfully states the, basically the, the, the arc that Harry is going to go through for this episode. You don't like people helping you. It makes you feel, what was the word, helpless, or it makes you feel like you can't do anything or something like that. Which is indeed that you know that's a big part of male fragility is feeling like if we accept any help from anybody else, especially a woman, especially a woman that we're supposed to be taking care of, that means we're weak. So yeah, great to see it explored. And Quinn from from engineering instead of Gib is giving the briefing and. She's very charming. I hope we get more. I, I was very glad that she got more than the one scene this episode. I hope she gets more, especially, I mean, this episode kind of implies like she and Luther like each other. I don't know if they like like each other yet, but yeah, that was, yeah, she's very charming. And I like the, the thing of how she, like, she... It's not that she doesn't know the stuff for the mission. It's not that she doesn't know how to operate the remote and these things. She's just a little insecure. She's not the most confident because she's not used to leading mission briefings. That's that's all. You know, she didn't get any like she didn't get any of the information wrong. She like the one you know, she, yes, not, not enough confidence, and she accidentally, you know, she starts talking about Al before assuring them, don't worry, you know, he's, he has Omega clearance, you know, certain level clearance, you know, we can bring him in on this so that they don't, you know, worry about the, you know, that was basically it, so, yeah, and, let's see, so yeah, the, the, um, Victor Madsen, perhaps brother of Michael Madsen, said he claims he wants reparations, a hundred millions for the victims of this gun-running corporation, and, you know, ultimately, it's, it turns out, it's, um, what's it called, it's, a uh, it's something to, to keep the FBI distracted, you know, yeah, I don't love that the show is, you know, it's it's not the first time that the show has brought up something that's actually extremely serious in real life, and it's just kind of there. I mean, I suppose at least they acknowledge that it is something some people care about, and they say these guys don't care about it, but, you know, yeah, they're actually, America really does need to pay reparations to the people they've hurt. And let's see. Yeah, the the you know Helen gets into the mission by saying you know this is about communication. You know what was it? If I can speak Russian, I can I can talk to your father. You know something something like that. And you know she she says dads love me. And then, like, when she tries to, to improve the situation, you know, Keith David just looks straight at her. I don't believe I was talking to you, young lady. It just, yeah. Love me some Keith David. I really hope he, you know, is in future episodes. He doesn't die. And the relationship is apparently improving between him and, and Gib. And, yeah, you know, like, I... John Carpenter, like, there are some actors that he kept bringing back. You know, he worked with Jamie Lee Curtis more than once, and I forget the name, but there was that one that he kept bringing back. Um, but, but yeah, you know, there, there are some, but 
Keith David and Kurt Russell are some of the ones that he worked with more than once, and you can see why. You know, I just recently rewatched The Thing 1982, and yeah, they're they're both incredible, not only in those roles, but just, yeah, it's no wonder that John Carpenter wanted to work with Keith David more than once, and yeah, I, I honestly, I, I always love seeing Keith David and stuff, so really, really cool, and they get, you know, he can be charming and charismatic he is when he when he actually starts listening to to give and you know that kind of thing he can be this kind of authoritative which he is both when when shutting down helen and when which you know i don't love a scene of a black man shutting down a, a woman but you know yeah and and when he's like as, trying to assert that he's right about this What's it called? The the um, the the mission, uh, uh, yeah, the the engineering stuff and such. Uh, you know, yeah, just he's 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 great, and they use his strengths well in this. And yeah, this episode is essentially Die Hard. Uh, you know, let's see if if it's not Die Hard, it has to be Die Hard but blank. I guess it's Die Hard, but where the, if, if, um, if he temporarily lost his eyesight, um, John McClane did, instead of stepping on glass. That's, yeah. And, and if he, if, if the people on the outside and on the radio were significantly more helpful. And... I like the joke with the the um, the smartphone camera. Are you seriously? In, what was it? Photo photograph mode? Or crap! I I don't remember. But yeah, you know he he wants him to to use the different mode. You know, it reminded me a lot of in the movie when the camera runs out of battery. I I feel like it's probably of you know an intentional reference to that. So that's very cool. And. Yeah, and and uh, you know, Madsen says keep just keep him talking. Our you know while and, and we can deal with our real business. I'm going downstairs, which was the one you know they thought if we go in through the downstairs, we'll be set. You know, they're not going to go downstairs. Why would they go downstairs? And they actually get very close to being spotted before they're ready to fight the um. I guess terrorists. They weren't, yeah, they want nerve gas, they're terrorists. And, let's see. Yeah, and, and we learn that Maria is claustrophobic, and she feels very exposed that he's bringing that up, and, you know, he's trying to be helpful, and it, it's this thing of, like, a lot of us guys we are trying to help, we can just be kind of clumsy about it, and yeah, I appreciate that this episode, you know, points that out. And yeah, there's the, the you know, first Harry tries to climb up the, the ladder, and, you know, thing breaks, and then the he gets the, the gas in his eyes, and then there's the explosion. I... I think the explosions were largely CG in this episode, but they looked better than previous CG explosions. I certainly don't think... Certainly, they can't all have been practical. There were more than I would figure they could get away with on the budget. But, yeah. It, it certainly did look better than previous CG explosions. And, yeah, now they're... In trouble with you know if it's a it's a it's an episode of a TV show of course the mission has to go wrong in some way and what was it he said it feels like you're trying to clear clear lava yeah by spraying lava some something like that you know and we get more Quinn and I like that you know when when Luther Pat and Maria Maria's like, we're, what are you doing? We're not dating anymore. You can't do it. You know, I bet you wouldn't pat Harry on the show. Yeah, but Harry's Harry. You know, and then when when Maria pats Harry on the shoulder, Luther's like, well, 
why are you patting him on the shoulder? So it's, you know, clearly giving away deep down. He does, you know, he is uncomfortable with the idea of him or her patting Harry on the shoulder. And he feels some sort of, you know, and that's also, that's a, that's a thing for a, a bunch of straight guys. They just cannot accept when the relationship is over, that's it. The relationship is over. You're no longer that person's partner. You can't touch them the way that you're used to unless they're, you know, unless they tell you to or something. But, yeah. So, again, I appreciate that being called out. And let's see. Yeah, the the they they fire a missile off the the top thing and threaten to shoot hostages. And so you know, really, it's it's getting more and more dangerous. And Helen joins and and you know does family therapy via the the you know communications thing. Right, I, I want to make sure to say, really cool to see Stephen Culp in something spy-related, and it's not the first time I've seen him in something spy-related where he screws something up, so that's, yeah. But, but yeah, you know, it, it's, the, the family therapy, you know, they make some jokes, but it is actually good, you know, there, there are conflicts like that between fathers and, and, you know, sons, daughters, you know, and they, you know, yeah, I, I really appreciate that they do talk to each other, and we see, you know, the episode makes completely clear, if they don't have some, what was it she called her, just call me an intermediary that doesn't take no for an answer, you know, without an intermediary, they're not going to listen to each other, but once they do listen to each other, you know, they, they do still care about each other. There is a familial love there. And Helen does manage to get the door open. And let's see. Yeah, they, they you know, Gibb tells them to check the basement like Al wanted. And you see the, 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 you know, and again, like, that's where you need a good actor. Like, a bad actor would make it sit, like, because it's important that for Al, this isn't like, yes, I got my way. It's like, my son is listening to me. This is this is good, you know the, because that's what he wants. You know he he doesn't want to hurt his son. He wants his son to to you know listen to the things that he does know about and and this kind of thing. so so yeah, and you know like Helen pointed out earlier in the episode, they were both right, but because they didn't want to listen to each other, they got into this bad situation. And once they do start listening to each other, you know they're they're able to to solve it much better, and I, I do like, it's very, very much of a, a dad thing to say, doing it right is quicker than doing it twice, you know, and, and Gib says, this is not about you teaching nine-year-old me, you know, to, to do my homework, or some, just, yeah, and... Yeah, we learned they were making nerve gas, and, you know, Al says, I can't believe, you know, the company, you know, did this, they're destroying my, my life's work, and Gibb says, I won't let them do that, you know, that's a, another great character moment, and, yeah, you know, they're doing it for profit, and I do appreciate, like, at the start of the, you know, yeah, early, early in the episode, it's established they basically, they make weapons for, you know, like, American government agencies and such. But we learn, you know, because of profit, they've now, you know, it. it is ultimately, it's, it's a strange, it's strange to say it's okay that, you know, you can, you can bomb people to death. You can, you can use, you know, guns to kill people. But you can't, you you know, there's a line you can't cross. But at the end of the day, that is true. That it, it is necessary. You know, we're not going to get rid of war, as nice as that would be, just by saying you can't use any, you know. So so to say, okay, you can use these weapons, but you can't use these. And nerve gas legitimately is truly horrifying. I, I appreciate that they use something real. You know, in earlier episodes, it's like, sonic weapon, and... The, 
I feel like the weapon in the pilot episode was also like something that we don't quite have in re it was like an exaggerated version but nerve gas that is a thing and that is something I want to say Geneva Convention is against it and yeah I honestly like the fact that they did show like what is the rating for the, the age rating for the show again cuz I oh okay yeah uh, Disney Plus it is 14 plus I would not show this episode to a child that they like that's nightmare inducing and yeah like what you see there that is that is accurate to nerve gas uh, you know the the if you read up on it the, the you know it takes not many seconds from from exposure he gets it in his lungs and he starts like vomiting and yeah it's a it's a horrific way to die and I uh, you know it's really good that it is you know, against the Geneva Convention, it is a uh, uh, war crime. It's a war crime to use. And and yeah, you know, there are American companies that go way over the line, the, you know, as if the line hasn't been moved enough, you know, just in the interest of profit. And Harry finally lets Helen help. You know, I, I wasn't really expecting it not to go that way, because so far the show has, you know, but still, it's super important for men to listen to women, so, you know, the, sh the show is, is doing the Luad's work, as Schwarzenegger would say. And, and the, yeah, the fight in the dark, where, you know, he, yeah, the, um... The, um, oh, right, right, before I get to that, yeah, the, yeah, Luther tries to help Maria about the claustrophobia, and I do like this thing of, you know, he says, if you'll let me help you with this, I promise I will never bring it up again, because that's, you know, that was part of the problem, that he brought it up just like that, you know, while they're on a mission, you know, like she said, she felt like he was throwing it back in her face. Which does suggest he probably has, I'm, I'm not sure we've seen it, but he probably has said or done some things that were, like, hurtful towards her. Uh, yeah. Let's see. And, you know, the episode calls out mansplaining, but it technically does work as a... I mean, ultimately, I suppose, the episode does convey that mansplaining is a bad thing, that you shouldn't... Yeah, yeah, because you could say it's kind of like ripping off the band-aid. It's not, it's not good, but it worked at least. But you know, hope yeah, hopefully nobody watches this and goes on to mansplaining. And yeah, so Helen in night vision helping Harry fight was both funny and like legitimately. A cool and and tense situation. You know, I I like the thing of you know, okay, Harry, your left. I mean, my left. <laughs> and the the bit of music used during it was was good. Let's see, and yeah, they managed to stop. And and I like that Al and Gib together stop Madsen. You know, he's he's like trying to run out. And also a good detail. You know, Madsen has his gun out, but he's like got it lowered. And Gib comes out and he's pointing at him because that's yeah. If if Madsen makes a sudden move, Gib is going to shoot him. There's no way for Madsen to get an accurate shot at Gib off before Gib fires at him. So so that's you know, and yeah, Al is standing next to him with like a um, I want to say an assault rifle, I think it is, and the, the maybe an M4, and, you know, he's saying, you better do it, that's my son, you know, that's a great moment, and Al and Quinn, uh, you know, together is, is great, and Gib will let Al meet Ava, even though he says, I, I understand if you don't want me to, you know, but... I'd like to, and yeah, which it, I, I'm glad that they are still together. I really hope we get more scenes with Gib and Ava. That they're great together, both as like characters and also they're a good team. And yeah, Quinn and Luther. You know, he 
he really likes the laser cutter, and that was also a great moment, you know, earlier when, oh yeah, uh, oh, you know, Axe makes a lot of stuff for Omega, like the laser cutter, and Quinn says, oh no, they, they mostly do weapony stuff, which is also just love when, when you take a, let's see, that's turning a noun into an adverb, I think, by adding a Y at the end, you know, big fan of that, love, I, I think, if language is not flexible it is meaningless and the yeah you know the you know, she points out oh yeah you know i actually made the the laser cutter and luther's like oh wow and and i like that it's not like a, i didn't think a girl could do that it's just a you know oh wow i'm so glad i get to meet the person who made the laser cutter it's so good you know and it is good like we did we see it in use later it, it is legitimately a good you know that's like priming the audience about, oh okay the laser cutter is a good tool you know and yeah with you know quinn is like so you like the laser cutter would you like to see you know the the yeah you know technically he's not allowed to see but she's gonna sneak him in and just yeah that's a it's a neat little thing, and and you know could lead to um even better, better, bigger, better connection. See, my brain I couldn't decide between bigger and better, and it comes out bitter, and that's exactly the thing I don't want to be saying. So that's annoying. And it turns out at the end, you know, <laughs> you're gonna do this to a blind man. You know, the the salsa dancing. Harry is doing better at it. He was overthinking it before. You know, that he, he kept saying, I, I don't understand about the and. I have the rest of it down, but I don't understand. You know, he, yeah, he was, he was making too big a deal. And, and that's, again, that's, you know, that's something we guys sometimes do. We, we focus so much on, you know, again, like I said earlier, in, I, I think, I guess when discussing the last episode, very gender stereotypical and, I don't know if it's going to keep being as relevant for as long because gender stereotypes are now being, you know, we're, we're realizing how malleable they are in, in reality, but at the very least, it does have empathy for women and it's saying, you know, yes, guys, this and this can be good, but you also have to listen to women and yeah, super important message. So I approve and that's it for this one. So yeah, looking forward to next episode. And let's see, I will probably do, let's see, there will be more videos coming this week, so I hope to catch you then.